Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, CEO of Boardroom Resources, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to be talking about when board leaders need to step up and lead. And joining me today is somebody who certainly meets the expert qualifications in this. Welcome Tom Leppard, who's a board member, and this is going to take me a while, a board member with Atkins, a corporation that's listed in the UK. Also a board member with Tudor Perini uh, Corporation. He is the chairman of a successful private company named View. He is the former chair and CEO of the Turn Turner Corporation, which is one of the largest general builders in the, in the world. Um, also, interestingly enough, he had a stint in public service as the mayor of Dallas. He was also the vice chair of the Pacific Century Financial Corporation, whose lead bank is Bank of Hawaii. And Tom, there are others that I could mention, but we don't want to eat up all the time talking about it. But or I make think, me sound too old. Yeah, or, or I think, but the, I think the audience gets it. You've been in a position of leadership many times. So welcome. TK, it's good to be with you. So because we have you and because that's the topic, this sort of when board leaders need to lead, uh, um, my first question for you is you spent serious time on both sides of the table. You've been on the CEO management side, you've been on the chairman uh, board side. So with all those experiences, how did all that shape you to be the type of chairman that you are today and how it leads to communicating with the CEO and communicating with your board members? Well, TK, I hope the first thing it did was gave me an understanding of both the role of a board and the role of management. Because I think in too many situations, sometimes the management doesn't understand the role of the board. And sometimes the board gets involved in management type of decisions. And either case turns out to be poor. I think I have a very good understanding of the role of the board focusing on policy questions. And also, probably most importantly, defining what is necessary in leadership at the company and then continuing to evaluate that. And then I hope I also have an appreciation of having been on the CEO side of the challenges and the issues that they have and hopefully in my roles as chairman and others, I've been able to mentor people and give those individuals in leadership at the company level a sense of some of the challenges and issues and maybe even be a sounding board at times too. So what skill sets do you think are critical for a chairman? I mean, you've You've obviously had the experience. What, what have you found out over the years are the most sort of critical skill sets that a chairman needs? I think the first would probably be a definition of leadership, and that is to define reality. I think the chairman especially has to have an appreciation of what reality is, what realities in the markets are, and what realities in the company are. One of the best expressions of the role of a chairman that I've heard, and it's a little bit flippant, but I think it's actually accurate, is the chairman has to have a nose in the business, but have their hands out of the business. So they have to be engaged enough to understand exactly what the issues are and be able to establish parameters, plans, etc., to avoid issues that may come in the future, but also to understand that they are not CEO. And what they need to do is ensure that they've got the right person in that CEO position. So that's a great segue into um, a nagging question that I've always had. So um, my experience is a vast majority of board members are certainly committed to uh, improving their skill sets and, and uh, their contribution in the boardroom. Um, there is a little nagging concern, though, that there's a lot of cases where um, somebody isn't contributing in the boardroom and the leadership, whoever that might be, the chairman or the lead director, um, does not take any action to help to improve that situation, either by counseling that director or by um, replacing that director. So research supports that, that that is a concern. So from your perspective, how do we 
when does somebody need to lead and act and when does somebody need to sit back and then should there be should we be giving more thought to who is that chairman or lead director um, first of all my experiences would substantiate exactly what, what, what you've said a lot of times people spend time on what they view as the board responsibilities but in reality they don't spend near enough time and in fact at times really aren't prepared to take the actions that a board sometimes has has to take I think there's a lot of different ways to come at the question that, that you asked TK. I think the first one is just uh, understanding the role of, of the director. I think some directors think, okay, I've got a meeting in April, my next meeting will be in June. I prepare for it in April, I'll prepare for it in June. But they really don't spend time in between. I think good boards spend a lot of time in between. For instance, I will always, as chair or even as board member, call the chair and always have kind of a debriefing on the meeting that took place. What are the issues that came out of it? What are the concerns that should be? Those sorts of things. I think a good chair should always do that with all the board members. I think also it's important to understand that a lot of things can happen in those interim two months. So board directors have to spend the time to understand and look at monthlies, look at what's happening in the company, be willing to spend a lot of time, in a lot of cases, in the time between the board meetings. So it's not just preparing for the board meeting, being the board meeting, but it's understanding what happens to, the, to that company in the interim. I think for too many, too many instances, we've got board members that just kind of think about the April, think about the June, and don't spend enough time in between. That chairman or the lead director has to have the skills to do a couple of things. Um, one is to make sure that they're engaging the rest of the board members that they really are probing, asking the questions, trying to, to, to get people in, involved, and understanding if board members are willing to take action when action is appropriate. But I think they also have to have that communication skill with the CEO to, again, review what's happening at the company. And in some cases, it's being a mentor. In some cases, it's being a sounding board. In some cases, it's just being a dose of reality to continue going back to that CEO. There's a lot of problems that we've seen on the front page of the newspaper of boards that have gone awry. Rarely does that happen all at once. Usually it's a series of missteps. Those missteps, if they were identified, worked on, you could either make the changes that were necessary in management, if that becomes the case, or ideally establish plans and kind of redirect the company, redirect management. And I think the board can be an enormous benefit on that. Unfortunately, sometimes they wait until it gets out of hand before they're willing to take action. They don't think about planning the missteps and doing the evaluations, both on the evaluations of the board, but also evaluations of management that are necessary in the interim. Well, Tom, that's great advice. We um, not only have you and I talked about this, but it's always a main topic of this show is the importance of board leadership, Critical. regardless of where that comes out of. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time uh, to come and join us for today. We appreciate that. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll be back again next week when we take a look at another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC, along with content contributors Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.